<laughs> this is the Witch's Magic Murder Mystery Podcast. Hey guys, I'm Kara. I'm Megan. And it's a side piece day. Yep, we're here on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. I have a mystery. Oh, good. Yes, it's, um, I pulled this article from the Tampa Bay News. Uh, it is about spontaneous combustion. Oh, man. Spontaneous <laughs> combustion fascinates me. I'm going to make this a little closer. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, it's in St. Petersburg. It's the curious case of Mary Reeser. I think that's her last name. St. Petersburg, Russia. Florida. Florida. Oh, yeah. I'm going there. Yeah, are you? Uh-huh. Look for all the things about Mary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they have all sorts of stuff because she was famous in the town for spontaneously combusting. Really? Yep, it said this baffled even the FBI. <laughs> when? When did this happen? Uh, it is 1951. Oh my gosh. Mary was a widow. Mm -hmm. She was being visited by her only son, Dr. Richard Reeser Jr. He was giving his mom a kiss to tell her goodbye after he had been visiting her. And so that she was alone for the night, she put her nightgown on and took a couple of like nighttime pills Mm -hmm. that she would normally take Mm -hmm. and decided, you know what, I'm going to have a cigarette before going to bed. Oh, no. The landlady showed up. Her name is Pansy Carpenter. Um, Trying to deliver a telegram the next morning. And she noticed that the handle to the door was super hot to the touch. And when opened, the walls were charred. Oh. Yeah. And embers were still crackling inside. But the house didn't catch on fire. You would think that if that were the case, like the whole house would have gone up in flames. Right. Like a cigarette can light a house on fire. Yeah. Firefighters went in and there was soot and smoke fill. Apartment. So it was an apartment. Like, the whole place could have gone up. Right. Like, not just hers. But it was and very yes, contained. Yes. She was gone. Completely. Well, not completely gone. <laughs> a <laughs> pile of black ashes. Uh, they also found coil springs from her chair that was she was sitting in, her backbone, and her left foot still sat in a pile wearing a black silk slipper. There are some reports that claim that her skull had shrunken to the size of a cup. Why? How is that even possible? Because the heat? I don't know. I don't either. Does bone do that? You would think no. Is that like on Beetlejuice where the shrunken head? Yes. Isn't that weird? I don't understand it. I don't understand it either. They said they did find evidence of extreme heat, obviously. <laughs> Good job, yeah. guys. Good yeah. Job. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Me they, too. They said bare candle wicks towered above puddles of melted wax, so it's not like she had lit a bunch of candles and fell asleep with them on because the candle... The wicks, wicks didn't, didn't have, yeah. So it's almost like there was just extreme heat, but no, in that like, one open space. flame. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird. Like a crazy, yeah. Because if there were open flames, then things uh-huh. would have caught on fire. Yeah. Like the whole space should have gone up in, sm- in flames. It said there were smudges of smoke on the tops of the walls and warped electric switches lined the room. Yeah. Down the walls were clean and the electric switches looked normal. And then it also said newspapers sat untouched, like they hadn't caught on fire That's or anything. That's so weird. Isn't it? I um, remember when I was younger, I used to walk to the library after school, and somehow in there I found some somewhere in a book, I stumbled upon the idea yeah. of human combustion. And as a kid, it was just like, what? oh my God, yeah. this happened? Yeah. And it, it's kind of like quicksand. Yes. I spent a lot of time worrying yeah. about something that's, that's not really going to, probably yeah, not I mean, going to kill me. I mean, yeah. Let's not. I mean, I'm pretty hot. Yeah. We're smoking hot <laughs> spicy i shouldn't joke this poor lady no. sorry this, lady. yeah sorry yeah. i make jokes when i'm anxious <laughs> uh, uh, her sheets were still white oh yeah uh it says it's the strangest unsolved mystery in tampa bay history the case has been documented in magazine articles documentaries and books but questions still remain said how could a woman go up in flames without the rest of the room burning what could have killed mary reeser oh my gosh by the time this episode airs, mm-hmm. I'll be back mm-hmm. from St. Petersburg. But that's where I'm going. I'm going to be away away from Kara for like I don't, a week and a half. <laughs> it's weird. What I don't like do? this at all. So we, you guys, it's amazing. We've, we've worked so far ahead that this this episode won't come out till I'm back. But while I'm there, I really yeah. do want to see if I can figure out. Yeah. Because there's always like one rainy day where we mm-hmm. end up going into Tampa. Yeah, maybe I could find I hope something. You can. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes, bring okay. me souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> it said that they came from Columbia, Pennsylvania. A few years after her husband died, she moved to St. Petersburg to be near her son and her granddaughters. 
She loved her family. She loved needlepointing and entertaining, but Florida was way too hot for her liking and she missed her friends back in Pennsylvania. It said her son could tell she was upset about it on the last day that he saw her, like when he left her that night. Um, he said she had been too worried about taking a trip back home to eat supper. Aww. So the pills she took before he left were the only thing in her system. So like when she went to bed or whatever. So no one quite knew what to make of this, but there's plenty of theories. Mm-hmm. Maybe the blaze was an accident. It was Maybe it was a lightning strike. One of the Tampa Times reader proposed in 1951 that she died from spontaneous human combustion. And this theory was the one that spread the furthest. They called her the Cinder Woman mystery. And it made national headlines. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would, right? <laughs> yes. The St. Petersburg police chief received hundreds of theories from amateur detectives. Some claim they smelled a strange odor outside of her home. And then theorists blamed everything from the fabric of the chair cushion to a napalm bomb. <laughs> uh, they said... Uh, <laughs> Just seems like they'd be real obvious if it was a napalm bomb. This, this is a quote. A ball of fire came through the open window and hit her. I seen it happen. A ball of fire from where, sir? Yeah. I, I done seen it happen. <laughs> I done seen it. I seen it. I knew it. I saw it from my own eyes. Well, there's still a mystery there because yeah, where the where'd ball of fire yeah. come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how did it not hurt anything on the way? Exactly. So the police chief drafted a letter to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and it says, Dear Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, The fire is too puzzling for this small town force to handle. So then they sent boxes of evidence to the FBI laboratory in D.C., and it included portions of the apartment rug, smoke samples, rubble from the walls and floors, and segments of her chair. The FBI agent spent three weeks examining these remains. They're still baffled. So it said finally on August 8th, um, they released a statement to the media calling it the most unusual case I've seen during my almost 25 years of police work in the city of St. Petersburg. FBI agents found no evidence that suggested lightning struck her or the building. All of the fuses in the apartment were still intact and investigators hadn't been able to detect substances that could have started this fire. So they don't think it was the cigarette said common combustible fluids and accelerants such as alcohol, gasoline, etc. would probably be consumed in such a fire and no trace of them detected afterward. So so spontaneous combustion, maybe? Uh, They said they ruled that out as well. They said it's possible that drowsy from her sleeping pills she took, she dozed off in the chair, and her cigarette maybe, like, lit her gown on fire? I I don't know. But wouldn't that silk slipper... Burn up, if that was the case. I would think so. Because she probably had a longer nightgown on. Well, and I just wonder, how did she catch on fire enough Mm -hmm. to do as... I mean, she burned long enough to basically completely disappear. Yeah. And nothing else caught fire? No. Yeah. And it said she had weighed about 170 pounds. They said human fat could have fed the fire um, and caused it to smolder throughout the evening To make, like, hot air and smoke rise to the top of the room. But it still doesn't make a ton of sense. Right. It said she was a great smoker, her daughter-in-law said to the St. Petersburg Time in 1991. The cigarette dropped to her lap. Her fat was the fuel that kept her burning. The floor was cement and the chair was by itself. There was nothing around her to burn. But then they... Then they say there were newspapers. They say that there was all this stuff around her. So I don't know what the daughter-in-law here is talking Wouldn't about. Dropping the cigarette to the point that it, for one, if you drop a cigarette on yourself, it it's just, not going to ignite you. Right. It just burns a hole in whatever you're wearing. I mean, right? she's not heavier, much heavier than I am. Well, also, wouldn't it have woken her up? Yes. If she caught, if her gown caught on fire, wouldn't that wake you up? Yeah. To the point that you could jump up, stop, drop, and roll, yeah. rip it off, yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. you wouldn't just sit there and burn. Yeah. What kind of strong, I wonder how strong those nighttime Nighttime pills were. Nighttime pills, I don't know. An anthropologist from the University of Pennsylvania disagreed with the cigarette combustion theory. Good, me too. Yeah. He said that instead of her head shrinking, that it probably exploded from the heat. But if it's still, I don't know, because I I didn't look for pictures. But there was but, a, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a skull there, though, yeah. right? Yeah. said it, yeah. so how did it explode? If it, if yeah, it and there? then he was like, but then there's the cremation of the body, which would require several thousands of degrees yeah. over the course of several hours. Well, that's what I mean. Like, and then the apartment really didn't hot. go up in flames. Like the whole building should have gone up in flames if it was that. I don't know. They said, I cannot conceive of such a complete cremation without more burning in the apartment. 
So yeah, like what I don't understand why it bizarre. didn't hold wholly catch on fire. Like what it said it's now been seventy years since her mysterious death. To this day, no one knows for sure what happened, and we may never have answers. After the FBI investigation trailed off, a portion of her ashes were buried next to her husband in Pennsylvania. The rest stayed with her offspring in St. Petersburg. They once told her family once told the St. Petersburg Times they used to feel her presence at least up until they got rid of her old furniture. That's grandma again. They used to say when a breeze rolled by, don't worry, she's nice. Aw. But then they got rid of her what furniture. What an awful way to die. I, yeah. But yeah, like you said, like if you felt like you were on fire, you would have, I mean, unless, she had to have spontaneously combusted. That's my only theory. That's, I'm stuck with that. And the thing is, if this just happens to be something that you've never heard of before, that's one case, but there's several. Oh, several. I wouldn't say it's common, but mm-hmm. there's still like cases all over the world where this seems to be what's happened. Yeah, like nothing else catches on fire. Yeah. And I had heard one theory that they linked several of them together by alcohol. Either the people were known alcoholics. Just something in their body. There was one lady mixed who with would, those chemicals. Not, she wasn't, she was actually very pious. She wasn't al- alcoholic, but she would bathe in alcohol for some reason. Oh. This is a very, very, you know, long, long time ago when they. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Someday, years from now, people look back and think what we do is weird. So. Yeah. But. They thought for some people there's some sort of chemical reaction that happens in their body that's caused by the alcohol. Right. But even then, like, that's, that doesn't, that's not true for every case. Like, it doesn't seem like they said that alcohol wasn't present yeah. in this one. So, yeah. It's just the weirdest, mm-hmm. the weirdest thing. And the fact that there really doesn't seem to be any answer yeah. is just like, what in the world? What is and happening? I guess it's not common enough. And it seems so outlandish that. They don't study it too hard. Yeah. Because it's yeah, like, yeah. well, that can't be what happened. We don't know what happened, but it can't but be that's that. No, there's no way. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. so rare. Why do you know? Yeah. Because can you imagine just walking around knowing that the possibility that you might at any moment burst into flames was just a real possibility? Yeah. And we all just knew it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't think about that. <laughs> no. But then like thinking about her cigarette possibly catching things on fire, if that chair... And her were on fire. The flames are going to get high enough to set the ceiling on fire to where the floors above her are going to catch on fire. I mean, I don't know what the chair was made of, but it probably wasn't, you know, like metal or some sort of fire pit material that would contain it that well. Like, it doesn't make any sense. No. And then it said her foot was still left in her slipper. Yeah. So. She had a spinal column of her broken skull and a foot. Oh, my God. Yeah, don't look up pictures. Yeah, don't. Yeah, Ugh. it's fascinating to think about. Yes. But I, also, it's the kind of thing I really love thinking about because there's know. no answer. I know. So. This is never going to be solved. No. I can't imagine. It's too rare to ever yeah. be solved. Yeah. I wonder if that's the most recent one, 1950s. I don't know. I'd be real interested to hear if there are any cases. Like recent. In the last, like, 20 years. Yeah. So it's probably something I'm going to Google when we get done. You can Google something for something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh, We will talk to you Friday. Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye.